And now, how to have a successful mission trip. Starring the living legend, Ginger Peach, the possum, the hammer, the mower, Moni, Mocha, Winnie, the flaming twig, Kathleena, the Jedi, the hipster, the little dipper, the twinnies, feathers, Congolongo, Woodsy, Smilery, the doe, Grandma Blessed, T Rex, Petey Boy, the Moker, Jilzy, the Blade, Crazy Dave, Papa Smurf, and Pierre. The first necessary step in having a successful mission trip is selecting a qualified group leader. This leader should demonstrate a lifestyle of piety. He should have developed people skills and above all, he should love Christ and love people. Note how the leader uses his influence to encourage his team and to motivate for more work proficiency and an overall more enjoyable experience. Hey, help! Yeah, Alright, here we go. Children, scrape all this off. Paint off. Girlie. Yeah. You guys have an attention There's span of like three here. seconds. I was listening. All right. What? Hey, this should only take you guys about an hour. Next, we need to recruit energetic young people. Be sure to explain in advance that this is no vacation. We are here to work, people. Note how they bound with energy. Where do they get all this spunk, this charisma? Of course, they rely solely on the Lord and the power of His might. <clears throat> now that you have your team assembled, it is time to travel. That's right, missions always requires traveling to some distant place. You may be required to travel in a plane for 5, 10, even 20 hours before reaching your final destination. For our purposes, we traveled by van for 6 hours before arriving in Gary, West Virginia. Though crossing a large distance, don't be afraid of stopping for a bathroom break, and stopping for gas, and stopping for food, and more gas, and another bathroom break, and a drink break, and another bathroom break, before arriving in Gary, West Virginia. Now that you have arrived with your team, it is time to delegate the various work projects. Who will build a bear-proof garbage bin? Who will paint the local medical clinic? Who will replace the roof of a house? Who will do the moonwalk on top of that roof? <coughs> Never mind that last one. Once your projects have been divided amongst your teammates, give them one more encouraging speech. So we appreciate you guys taking a week out of your life to work. This is our opportunity to share Jesus with them. God love you. Has a great purpose and plan for you. And this is part of his plan for you to reach out and be a blessing to other people. And a prayer. Dear God, I pray that you just bless us and give us the energy to, um, help Miss Tweety um, fix up her house so that she can provide a home for her daughter. And I pray that we don't die if I don't fall into the roof. And I pray that you just give us the energy to last all day until we can get everything done. And, just and send them out to work. Let's take a look at how each project was done. When bears begin tearing up the local garbage for food, it is time to mount a defensive. That's right, protect your garbage. How to make a bear-proof garbage bin. First, determine where the bin will be placed. Remove the existing garbage. Be sure to use protective handgear. Avoid injury to local wildlife. Dig holes where the frame posts will go. Next, build the frame for the bin. Feel free to use all the assistance you can get and share the hammer, drill, shovel, and any other equipment you might need to utilize. Press fast forward and voila, we have a bear-proof garbage bin. How to replace a leaking roof. First, safely navigate the ladder to climb to the rooftop. Next, use this shovel thingy to remove the existing roofing, being sure to remove all the nails. <clears throat> I said remove all the nails. That's better. Once the roof is cleared of the old materials, nail in quality plywood to provide a stable mounting surface for the new roof. Add tar paper and you're almost ready to begin tacking in the new shingles. Please note, whatever you do, try to keep the shingles in a parallel uniform line. Any dipping and you will be nicknamed the Big or Little Dipper. Also, feel free to recruit any local persons to assist in whatever manner possible. 
150 man hours later and your roof is as good as new. <coughs> How to paint a medical clinic. Most importantly, please be sure to have enough paint for whichever color you will be painting. The last thing you want to happen is to run out of paint. Once the paint supply has been verified, divide the paint jobs based on your available workforce. Speaking of the force, allow each of your young people to use whatever skills they have to speed up the painting process. As you go to paint to tippy-top places, please remember your ladder safety. Always keep three points of contact on the ladder and never use a ladder missing a stepping rung. Remember people, this is a mission trip. Take time to visit with your local hosts. Tell them about Jesus, listen to their story and uh, their songs. I'm on that good, good, good rapping flow. I got a blessing from God, y'all. I don't know what if I do with God. I'm going to pray till the day I fall. Pray till the day I fall. My God love me. My Jesus love me. My blessing. Ain't got time for the negative. Once the rain begins, please take this as your God-appointed lunch break. Eat up. Visit with more people and, if need be, retreat back to your bunkhouse for more instructions from your leader. How to make a difference in a community. Since this is a mission trip, we would be amiss to fail to mention the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The most important part of sharing your faith with others is having others to share him with. So, choose a quality location. Next, go door to door inviting the locals to come hear about Jesus. Feel free to mention the free prizes, candy and games that will be available as well. Finally, on the day appointed, have fun. Play games with the little ones. Hang out with the young people. Share Jesus with everyone you meet and act goofy if you so desire. I'll be alone. Can't say you know it, baby. At the end of the day, please be sure to present an opportunity for the locals to make Jesus Christ their Lord and Savior by praying this prayer with me. And always be with me in my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Just building a roof and ripping it off for Miss Tweety and seeing how glad she was for us to do it, even though we weren't professionals and we didn't do every job we needed to. That's it was good. just a smile on her face that made me happy. My favorite moment on the trip, I think, was getting to know a lot of the young people in the church and even some of the adults that we pass by every Sunday. And um, you know, when we meet and greet at the church and we shake each other's hands and stuff, it's one thing that they get to work side by side with other adults in the church and, and with the kids. The kids worked really hard. Well, I enjoyed Mrs. Tweet a lot and Monday was very awesome. First time I met her and it was funny. I had so much fun I don't remember, but it's good. I mean, God is taking care of our, taking care of her and loving her and stuff. And, it's just the way it is, you know. Probably building that roof, or well, rebuilding the roof at Miss Tweety's house. Yeah. Yeah. Like a blessing. When I fell off the roof. <laughs> okay, you're gonna have to tell the story. <laughs> and Pat <laughs> grabbed me by one arm, swung me back up on the roof, and we call him the Hulk because um, he seemed pretty powerful. But I know there was angels there that guided, held me up, and guided him and. Somehow, like you said, one second my legs are hanging over, the next second I'm sitting on the ledge. <laughs> and Pat's going, oh my gosh, I bruised your arm. Just to keep working and know, like, the heat was just, it was so hot, but I just kept working. Um, I would have to say doing kids club because it was amazing to see how um, misbehaved all the kids were at the beginning of the week and by the end of the week they were just so sweet and so loving on everybody that was helping there. 
when we help the kids for Kids Club, we really like help them learn about God more and help them communicate with each other and start to like be friends with each other more and nicer to each other. Um, I think whenever we were painting at the clinic and um, there was a man named Jamie who came and he just talked to us and we, while we were working he was talking to us and asking us things, questions about God and singing to us and just really, he was really interested in what we were doing and really thankful and it made me feel really good like I was doing a lot more than what, than just painting at the clinic. The time that I had the opportunity to pray with a little girl, one little girl the first day we were there, I asked her how she was and she said their ear hurt and um, I didn't get a chance to pray with her that day. They left before I got a chance. And the second day I got to lay hands on her and pray for her ear. And when I opened my eyes after praying, she was right in my face. <laughs> her eyes were like. And the next day when she came, I asked her how her ear was feeling. And she said, it doesn't really hurt much anymore. So that, yeah, that was, that was a momentous occasion for me. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs>